I just want to start off by saying, if you want the answer at the end, prepare to be disappointed. There just isn't one. I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation. I wasn't paid, of course, but internships aren't, but they have some perks behind education. To adults, it might not seem like a big one, but most kids at the time would go crazy over it. Now, since I directly with the editors and animators, I got a few views of the new episodes before they aired. I'll get right to it without giving too much unnecessary details. They had very recently made the Spongebob movie and the entire staff was somewhat sapped over creativity, so it took them longer to start up the season. But the delay lasted longer for more upsetting reasons. There was a problem with the series 4 premiere that set everyone and everything back for several months. Me and two interns were in the editing room along with the lead animators and sound editors in the final cut. We received a copy that was supposed to be Fear the Krabby Patty and gathered around the scene to watch. Now given that it isn't final yet, editors often put up a mock title card. Sort of a joke for us with phony, oftentimes lewd titles, such as How Sex Doesn't Work instead of Rockabye Baby. That, that one episode you guys can know. Rockabye by Valve by Spongebob and Patrick adopt a sea scallop. Nothing particularly funny, but work related chuckles. So when we saw the title card Squidward Suicide, we didn't think it more than just a mild joke. One of the interns did have a little small throat laugh at it. The go the happy go lucky music plays as a normal. The story began with Squidward practicing his clarinet, hitting a few sour notes like normal. We hear SpongeBob laughing outside and Squidward stops, yelling at him to keep it down, as he has a concert that night and he needs practice. SpongeBob says okay and goes see Sandy with Patrick. The bubble splash screen starts comes up, and we have the ending of Squidward's concert. This is when things began to seem off. While playing, a few frames repeat themselves, but the second didn't. At this point, it sounded like stacked up with animation, so yes, that's not common. But when he stops playing, the sound finishes as if it skips never happened. There is slight murmuring in the crowd before they began to boo him. Not normal cartoon booing that is common in the show. But you could very clearly hear Malice in it. Squidward's in the full frame looking visibly afraid. The shot goes to the crowd with Spongebob in center frame. And he too is booing very much unlike him. That isn't the oddest thing though. What is odd is everyone had hyper realistic eyes. Very detailed clearly shots of people's real eyes, but something is a bit more real than CGI. The pupils were red. Some of us looked at each other, obviously confused, but since we weren't the writers, we didn't question the appeal for two children yet. The shot goes to Squidward, sitting on the edge of the bed, looking very, f looking very down. The view out of his porthole window is the night sky, so it isn't very long after the concert. The unsettling part is that at this point there is no sound. Literally, no sound. Not even the feedback from the speakers in the room. It's as if the speakers were turned off, though their stats show them working perfectly fine. He just sat there, blinking, in the silence for about 30 seconds. And he starts to sob softly. He put his hands, or what we would like to say, tentacles, over his eyes and cried quietly for a full minute more. All the while, it sounded in the background very well, growing from not nothing but barely audible. It sounded like a slight breeze through a forest. The screen slowly begins to zoom in on his face. By slow, I mean it's very noticeable if you look at the shots 10 seconds apart side by side. His sobbing got louder, more full of hurt and anger. The screen twitches a little, as if 
A twist on, its, on itself for a split second, then back to normal. The wind through the trees sound gets slower, louder, and more severe, as if the storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part is this, uh, this sound, and Squidward's sobbing sounded real, as if the sound wasn't coming from the speakers, but as if the speakers were holes. The sound was coming through from the other side. A good as sound as the audio likes to have, they don't purchase the equipment to be that good of a project sound of that quality. Below the sound of the wind and sobbing very faint, something sounded like laughing. It came at odd times and never lasted more than a second, so you had a hard time pinning it. We watched the show twice, so part of me things sound too specific, but I've had time to think about them. After 30 seconds of this, the screen blurred and twitched violently and something flashed over the screen as if it was a single frame was replaced. The lead animator editor paused to rebound frame by frame. What we saw... What we saw was horrible. It was a still photo of a dead child. It couldn't have been more than six. The face was mangled and blooded. One eye dangling over his unturned face popped. He was naked down to his underwear, his stomach crudely cut open and his testicles laying beside him. He was lying on some pavement, that's probably a road. The most upsetting part was that there was a shadow of the photographer. There was no crime tape, no evidence, tags or markers, and the angle was completely off for a short dis design to the evidence. I would seem, it, it would seem, the photographer was the person responsible for the child's death. We were of course mollified, but pressed on, hoping it was just a sick joke. The screen flipped back to Squidward, still sobbing, louder than before, and half body in frame. There was now what half appeared to be a blood running down his face from his eyes. The blood was also done with hyper-realistic style, looking at it as if you touched it, you would get blood on your fingers. The wind sounded now as if there was of a gale blowing through the forest. There were even snapping sounds of branches, la and the laughing, a deep barn tone, lasting at a lo longer and more calmly, more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the screen again twitched and showed a single frame photo. The editor was a little afraid to go back, we all were, but he knew he had to. This time, the photo was that of what appeared to be a little girl, no older than the first child. She was laying on her stomach, her intestines in the pool of blood next to her. Her left eye was popped out and popped. Naked except for underwear. Her, her entails were pulled, were piled on top of her, above her crude cut along her back. Again, the body was the street, and the photographic shadow was visible, very similar to the size and shape of the first. I had to choke back vomit. And one intern, the only female in the room, ran out. The show was zoomed. About 5 seconds after the second photo played, Squidward went silent, as did all sound, like it was this scene started. He put his tentacles down and his eyes were now done with hyperrealism, like the others were in the beginning of this episode. They were bleeding, bloodshot. He just stared at the screen, as if watching the viewer. After about 10 seconds, he starts sobbing, this time not covering his eyes. This sound was piercing and loud. The most fear included of all of his sobbing was mixed with screams. Tears and blood were dripping down his face in heavy rate. The wind sound came back, and so did the deep voice laughing. And this time, the still photo lasted for a good 5 frames. The animator was able to stop it on the 4th and backed up. 
This time the photo was of a was of a boy, about the same age, but this time the scene was different. The entrails were just being pulled out of the intent and、uh, from the stomach, when from a large hand, the right eye popped and dangling, blood trickling down it. The animator proceeded. It was hard to believe, but the next one was different. But we couldn't tell what. He went on the next. Same thing. He went back to the first and played them quicker, and I lost it. I vomited on the floor. The animating and sound editors gasping as the, at the screen. The the five frames were not as if they were five different photos. They were played out as they were frames from a video. We saw the hand slowly lift out the guts. We saw the kid's eyes focus on it. We even saw two frames of the eye of the kid blink, beginning to blink. The lead sound editor told us to stop. We had to call the creator to see if Mr. Hellenberg arrived within about 15 minutes. He was confused as to why he was called down here, so the editor just continued the episode. Once the three frames were shown, all screaming, all sound again stopped. Squidward was just staring at the viewer, full frame of the face, for about three seconds. A shot quickly panned out to deep voice saying, "Do it!" And we see in Squidward's hand a shotgun. He immediately put the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. Realistic blood and brains mutter splattered the wall behind him. In his bed, and he fell back with the force. This last five seconds of this episode show、uh, his body on the bed, on his side. One eye dangling on what's left of his of his head above the floor, staring blankly at it. Then the episode ends. Mr. Hellenberg is obviously angry about this. He demanded to know what the heck was going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it was just it was just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint the entirely of in the mind, and it caused me horrible nightmares. I'm sorry I stayed. The only theory I can think of, and the only theory we could think of actually was. The file was edited by someone, and a chain from the drawing studios to here. The CTO was called to analyze when it happened. The analysis of the file did show it was edited over by a new material. However, the timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before we began viewing it. All equipment involved was examined for forging software, hardware, as well as glitches. As if the timestamp may have glitched and show the wrong time, but everything checked out fine. We don't know what happened to this day. Nobody does. There was an investigation due to the nature of the photos, but nothing came of it. No child was seen identified, and no clues were gathered from the data involved, nor physical clues in the photos. I never believed in unexpected phenomena before, but now that I have something. Happened. I can't prove anything about it beyond evidence. I think twice about things.